Hey there, my name's Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you about the DN4816i from Midas. If you're brand new to my channel, I'm all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now this is a 16 input stage connect device that Midas has released for the Behringer wing to go and send 16 inputs from this down to the Behringer wing using stage connect. Now stage connect allows us to send 32 channels down one XLR cable. Now it is recommended that is a DMX or a data style cable because it is digital information, it's not analog, but it allows us to send 32 channels, either inputs or outputs or any combination of the two down that single XLR cable. Now I'd love to actually show you the inputs on this and then the configuration settings on the back of this. So as we can see, there's 16 inputs on this and they're all line level and they all are combo jacks. So there's a TRS input and an XLR input. So you can choose either between those, but these are line level. So you wouldn't be able to plug in a guitar or a microphone directly into this as it wouldn't have enough gain and it cannot send phantom power. We do have a stage connect light here, which if it's green, everything's good. If it's red, there is an error. Over on the right hand side, there is a power light. So once you have applied power to this, either using the DC wall block or it can actually be powered over the Stage Connect XLR line. If we go ahead and turn this around to the back, we will see our rest of our connections here. So we have our DC input, so there is a power supply that comes with this, but it's not needed if it's the first device in the chain, as we can also send power down the Stage Connect line. So there is a calculator on Mida's website that allows you to see if you need to have multiple devices that are powered or not. We then come to our USB, which is going to be for updating the firmware. We have our Ultranet. And then we also have our Stage Connect, Slave and Master. So if this is the first device in the chain or the second device in the chain, you would want to come out of the Master. And then if we are plugging this into our Behringer wing right here, we would plug the end into our slave because this Behringer wing is the master. We then come over to our slave settings. Now, our slave settings allow us to change the configuration that this is set to. So we can do zero inputs and 16 outputs, 16 by 16 being inputs and outputs, or 16 inputs and zero outputs. Now, my recommendation is if you're plugging this into your Behringer wing, we set this to 16 by 16, and then we want to set this to slave as this is a slave to the Behringer wing. And then if this is the first device in the chain, without the Behringer wing, then that's when we would go ahead and switch this to master. But in this case, we're wanting to connect this into the Behringer wing. So if we go and look on the back side of my Behringer wing, here is our stage connect input. And this is just a simple XLR cable, which we are then going to go and plug into the slave on our stage connect. Once we have done that, we will flip this around and we will see that we have our blue power light as well as a green stage connect light. Now that we have this DN4816i plugged into our Behringer wing via the stage connect, let's actually dive into the routing and the settings inside of the Behringer wing. So the first thing that I would love for you to do is go to your routing page and then I want you to go to sources. Once we're here, I'm going to have you select our source group as Stage Connect. We can then see our Stage Connect configuration. Now this will typically be set to auto, but one thing that I suggest is for you to always manually set this to whatever you're planning your configuration to be if you have multiple devices on this Stage Connect line. So for instance, if this was not the only device on this, I would suggest that you set this specifically up. For instance, if we had this plus the DN4888, which has eight inputs and eight outputs, if we had both of those plugged into the Stage Connect, we would want to have 24 inputs and eight outputs. So that's when we can go and find our eight out and 24 in. 
But for instance, this case, we have 16 inputs and no outputs. So we can either go and select auto, or we could go and select 16 by 16, which would then give us the ability to expand some outputs if we purchased another device. But in this case, because we are the only stage connect device on this line, I'm going to leave it on auto. We can then see that we have 16 inputs on our stage connect here. So we can see that one through 16 are lit. So let's go ahead and actually route these to our channels. So we have our source here, and we have our channels here, but we want to actually route this to our channels. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on channels, hit the unlock, hit auto plus one, which will allow us to patch a lot faster. And then on our source group, we're going to select stage connect. And we can see that we have our 16 here, so I'm just going to go through and select them. So I do have pink noise being generated into my XLR1 on our Stage Connect device. So if we go over and we select our channel, we can go ahead and hear that in the PA now. Now, as I was saying earlier, is that this DN4816i is all line level inputs, which is the case. However, the Behringer Wing allows us to have 18 dB of trim adjustment, either positive or negative, on this input. So we have our channel one selected here, and we have our stage connect, but we have our trim ab ability to go all the way up to positive 18 or negative 18 to adjust the gain of this input. This is slightly different than preamp gain as we wouldn't be able to get enough gain on a microphone unless it had a lot of output. However, this does not allow us to send phantom power down this output as it's only line level. Now this brings us to the conclusion of the video. If you have multiple Stage Connect devices that you're wanting to put on the same line, I have a video coming up for you soon of showing how to get this configured with multiple devices on the same line. If you do happen to have any questions, make sure you post in the comment section below. Also, if there's a video that you're hoping that I will make on any of the products that are out there, please drop that in the comment section below as I'm always looking through those comments for videos that you are going to find helpful. If you haven't already, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com. Otherwise, thanks and have a great day.